And watch this. Their job is to pick what God gives you. I know a lot of the new faith preachers and the new uh, faith believers. I mean, sometimes when I talk to some of you, I'm so impressed. Like, your, your faith levels are wow. When I grow up, I want to be like some of you. So, when you listen to the faith talkers and, and stuff now, sometimes you, you get a little, you get this whole idea as if Satan is just some guy lying down in some room somewhere. He's not working. No. Someone said that there is one thing that both Satan and God agree on. The Bible says that Satan finds work for idle hands. And God has also strongly rebuked diligence and rebuked laziness. He's encouraged all of us to be there. So at least there is one thing that both Satan and God agree on that we both hate it when you are lazy. So the guy who hates laziness, that do you think he himself is just going to be lying down somewhere? Now let me tell you this. But come on, we are in the presence of God. The power of God is in this place. I don't think the enemy can step in. Well, yes, of course, it's true. The power of God is in this place, but it doesn't stop him from stepping in. It stops him from doing something negative when he steps in. I mean, the Bible says in Job 1, it says that the sons of God guarded to present themselves before God. And Satan was there amongst them. And God said, Charlie, bro, how have you been? What's happening? He said, well, I've been to and fro the earth and everywhere is calm. God said, uh-huh. Charlie, Job, I want to promote the guy. Have you tested? Have you tried Job? He said, no, no, no. Every time I see my past, but there's a wall of fire around him. God said, oh, sorry, I forgot. Let me take it off. So probably our understanding of God's relationship with the enemy is different from what it actually is. Jesus also said the prince of this world comes and he has nothing in me. He's like, I can't stop from coming. But ask when he comes there, he will not find anything to base on. Hmm. The Bible says he was led of the spirit into the world that is not too fast to be tempted. In other words, the Holy Spirit forced them booked an appointment between Jesus and Satan. Because the Bible says he, he, was, he was led. The word that means he was driven of the spirit. So it's like they literally forced him into the, for the appointment. I mean, Satan is not a big deal like that, you Bob. <laughs> like he can come around. Around there he can come around. I remember when Jesus saw the demons in Mark 5 in the madman of Gadara. He said, come out of him. And the demons said, we go. Then Jesus said, what is your name? I mean, I said go, and they said we won't go. This they said that to Jesus. And Jesus said, What is your name? He said, Legion, for we are many. Then they told Jesus that you can cast us out of the man, but don't cast us out of this region. Jesus said, Okay. He said, So there are a lot of things you don't understand yet, as far as the spirit is concerned. Now, what are things is this? The Bible says that the sower went out to so who is the sower? Who is the sower louder? Who is the sower? God. And what did he go and sow? What were the seeds? The word. So the sower went out to sow the word. God went out to sow the word. And when God was sowing the word, when he scatters, Satan comes to pick some of them. God didn't talk. He says, those that fell by the roadside, the enemy came to pick them away. Satan was there on the field. As God scattered him, God didn't talk. Now, I was explaining to some people this morning that God doesn't give, God's word is substance. The whole idea of matter, reality, substance comes from the word of God. He says all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. So by the time we can see something substantial is because the word of God was released about the thing. In other words, if God wanted to dash to a dress, he wouldn't look for a dress, he would say a dress. If God wanted to give you a good job, he wouldn't say, uh, I want to talk to Mr. So-and-so to give you. No, he will speak a good job to you. He says he calls those things that be not as though they were. So once God calls something, is done. His word come out as matter. That means that the seeds that the sower scattered were actually matter. In other words, it was somewhere someone's certificate. <laughs> Somewhere, someone's marriage. 
Come on, does God give marriage? Every time you hear the prophet say, the Lord says that your marriage will come soon. That was God giving the marriage. He told, he told Solomon, he said, you, 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 because you ask for wisdom, I will give you wealth and fame. God gave wealth and fame. When people felt like mentioning Solomon's name, or people felt like, hey, have you heard of Solomon? Like every time they made that statement, it's because God gave it to Solomon that people should mention his name and talk about him. So God's word can give. Like it, He gives everything. That's why God's word will be given to somebody that you will not struggle in life. And that is it. Other people will do things, will tell, for some strange reason, the person will just smooth, it's just smooth to the top. That's why God's word will be given to a widow that just go and borrow vessels. When you pour, the oil will not cease. And like, without stress, the impossible happened. He said, if it is you bid me to come, God's word said, come. That is it. A person walked on water, smooth. Abena. So, like, when God gives his word, he has given you something. That is it. That is why, like, you need a word from the Lord for everything. It is your secret as a believer. It's your secret as a believer. So, if you remember a word that was given to you probably about favor, you must understand that favor has been given me. That means that anytime you are going for an interview or anything of that sort, you must remember that there is something substantial, something matter that has been handed over to me. It's called favor. When I go there, they have no option but to accept me. So, if you are clapping, do it nicely. <laughs> so, the word of the Lord something has given. But can you imagine the enemy could come and steal? You see, the word of the Lord is, is not just a revelation to you. It's not just a knowing God wants you to have. That knowing must be translated into action. Are you following? So it says, he who hears my word and does not do that. But Jesus, we thought some of the things, you just said it so that we would know. No, everything I said can be done. So the end result of everything God says to you is what you can do with it. So everything God is saying, everything God is teaching, everything God is saying, God, God is teaching you. Even what I'm teaching you right now is not for you to hear and understand. It's for you to hear and do. There is something you can do out of what I'm saying to you. And that's the conclusion. But when Satan comes to steal the word, you're not able to do what the word said. The word landed, but you weren't able to do because the seed was stolen after it landed. So people go for a lot of services and a lot of words are released. But guess what? The enemy comes to steal the seed. Now, the seed does not disintegrate when the enemy steals it. He takes it. It is for him. It is with him. That is why a malam can offer somebody marriage. Because it was a seed that was stolen from the believer. That is why a malam can offer someone a child. Because it was a seed that was stolen from a believer. The thief cometh not but for to what? So, so, what is Satan stealing? He's stealing every good thing that God meant for you. He wants to take it. So when you understand this, it changes your engagement as far as warfare is concerned forever. It changes the way you pray forever. Hey! So now you know that things can be mine, but it can be taken from me. I'm not talking to you about some abstract faith thing. I'm talking to you about a practical spiritual life. What happens in the realm of the spirit? Yeah? Oh, very serious. I'm talking about, to you about what happens in the realm of the spirit. Uh. Demons can launch attacks, arrows on you. They launch the arrows like that. And when you become depressed, discouraged, and broken down... You said that all the good things God gave your angels to minister to you, that this is, your angel also becomes, because your strength is directly parallel to that of the spirit that ministers to you. So once you become discouraged, depressed, and low on assignment, the same happens to the spirit ministering to you. So they are having this great thing of yours, and then they just become weak, and the demon just go and snatch it. Hmm? When we pray, we interrupt that activity. 
when we pray we attack and interrupt that business of stealing from saints we interrupt it <laughs> when we pray we interrupt that activity so imagine some robbers were coming to steal right they were coming to steal to them they have done their plan everything then for some interesting reason random police officers decided to patrol the area the day they were coming what happens the activity is interrupted all of a sudden their move has casted exactly so they have to go and come another day now as far as you are concerned the law enforcement the beings that enforce the things that God has said to you they are your angels so when these spirits come and they come and meet law enforcement they go back sometimes they try to fight but if the law enforcement has a lot of power they go back so 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 watch this instead of I'm taking my time to teach you on, on prayer in a different light why? So that not only have I made you pray here, but I've also given you an understanding or based on what I'm teaching you, I've given you the ability to go and pray. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of of what? Angels. Though I speak in the tongues of men and of that means that on the day of Pentecost, there were two dimensions to the gifts that the apostles were given. Dimension number one is that they could speak in the tongues of men. So the people heard them speak in their languages. Today we have the JWs and the SDAs and co saying that. And how can you speak in a language you don't understand? When the apostles spoke, people understood. That is because they spoke with the tongues of men. He says, and the tongues of angels at that point it wasn't relevant for them to speak in the tongues of angels because God needed to announce to the whole world that it is the day of Pentecost in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy your handmaidens, your sons, my spirit will come upon them, they will see visions they will prophesy, your old men will dream God wanted the whole world to hear so he waited the Passover when people, Jews from different nations had gathered, he made them speak in the tongues of men. They spoke in everybody's language and told everybody that this is what God is doing. Wait, your countrymen. Go and tell. That was how the gospel first came to Africa. Right? Now, watch this. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts rather that he may prophesy. Verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. In other words, they have given us a third facet of this simple gift you have. They say when you are speaking in tongues, sometimes you speak earthly languages. When you are speaking in tongues, sometimes you speak in the languages of angels. Then finally, says Sandra, when you speak in tongues, it's just you and God. Clap. I will never stop saying this. I will never stop saying this. That if a juju man should come here speaking in an unknown tongue, you see the reverence and the fear that you all give him. But you are the one doing it so you don't respect it. If a juju man should come and just say, boom, you see how people will say, hey, the guy is speaking in demo, language of demons. I hear the demons taught him how to say this. Recent, I'll send a video to the pages shortly um, after the service, sorry. Now, the video was showing a scan of the brain when a man, one scientist decided to conduct this experiment, a scan of the brain when a man was speaking in tongues and when he spoke in English. And they realized that the aspect of the brain that was responsible for language was completely active, fully active when he spoke in English. As soon as he started speaking in tongues, it was dormant. In other words, showing by scans the tongues he was speaking had nothing to do with the aspect of the brain that is responsible for speaking in the languages. This is something spiritual happening. 
every time you speak in tongues. And so you can speak or you normally speak in the tongue of the angels. And so what that means is that you are simply instructing your angels. I like what Jojo is doing. He's blowing in tongues as I'm talking. He said, I, you are speaking. No, no, this thing, don't be proud. Just also start speaking in tongues. Ah. Just also say, start. I'm helping you, sir. So now watch this. He, he said, he said, he said, you speak in the tongue of angels. So that means that there are times where when you speak in tongues, you are communicating to who? Your angels. You are communicating to who? Your angels. And what are you sharing with the angels? Bedtime stories. See, almost every time we saw an angel in the Bible, can I tell you what they came to do? Number one, the people were in a situation, they needed deliverance. That's number one. Number two, they came to deliver a message. Apart from these two, tell me what else you saw angels come and do. Tell me, if you hear of any angel. Tell me what they came to do. In other words, there was one aspect of it that had to do with warring. Coming as a solution to problems. Another aspect of it had to do with giving relevant information. I say, as far as angels came to men, check. If they didn't come and give relevant information, they came to fight on behalf of men. Or they came to fight men. <laughs> so, Lisa, when you open your mouth to speak in tongues, hey, do you know one thing about spiritual activities? It is better you don't do it if you will do it without understanding. It is better you don't touch Jesus if you will touch him without saying to yourself, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. It's better you don't touch. Because all the thronging and all the touching until the woman with the issue of blood came, we realized that it was nothing, it was zero. The, all the touching Zion meant nothing to the Lord. It meant zero, zero, zero to the Lord. It meant zero to the Lord Jesus. It meant zero <laughs> to the Lord. No power left him, meaning that they were touching cloth. They were touching fabric. No power. Another woman had an understanding. In other words, she decided that if I, you see, me, uh, this is my faith about this thing. If I touch it, I'll be made whole. When she tuned her understanding to that place, that's all. When she touched, see what happened. Hey. Me. Me. Already prayer is work. So, parents say I'll open my mouth to pray and then I'll not put my heart in any and can't pray. Because that thing is work already. So, if it's work already, then why don't I put my whole self into it? Sometimes, when I'm about to speak in tongues, I just tell myself that speaking in tongues, I'm sorted out for life. <laughs> you see, and here is the thing the power will be released for it too. So, you are about to release some angels concerning your life. We'll all be here, we'll be praying in tongues. Somebody's praying in tongues to just stay up themselves. Oh, Kabbalah, I'm feeling stirred up. Somebody is praying in tongues and it is literally rearranging your life like a puzzle. It's rearranging from now to five years, ten years from now. It's, it, the, the, your tongue is taking it one by one. It's rearranging. Year one, pa, pa, pa. Year two, okay, we move the job here. This guy will give him tough time. We take him out of the job. We do this, we do that. So your tongues will be rearranging things from now into the future. Just continue in this life. Begin to speak in the language of the spirit. Hey, 
My life is rearranged. Our lives are rearranged. Parabadabata, 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 Ayabadagabata, 
the power of God is arranging our lives the power of God is arranging our lives Apayada, 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 apayada. E para gabada gabama do ashayada, e para gabada gabama do ashayada. Arabada gabama dia, e para gabada gabama do ashayada, e para gabada gabama do ashayada, e já para gabada gabama do ashayada. A paragabada gababa do Shaya, I pragada gaman do Shaya, I pragada gaman do Shaya, A paragabada gababa do Shaya, A paragabada gaman do Shaya, A rabadaba, 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 in the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your head. Say in the name of Jesus. I subject my life to the will of God. I subject my life to the will of God. Nothing but the will of God will be done in my life. No witch can dictate my life. No occult can dictate my life. No demon can dictate my life. The enemy cannot dictate my life. Only God, only God, only God, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Only the will of God for my life in the name of Jesus. No witch can dictate my life. A paragabadaya, a paragabadaya, a dagaman do a shire. No occult spirit can dictate our lives. A paragabadagababaya, no demon of darkness can dictate our lives in the name of Jesus. A paia, a paia, a paia, a paia, a paia, a paia. in the name of Jesus thank you spirit of God now sit down for one minute let me just show you something By the way, just a tip, just a tip to give you. Do you know that prophets don't call people by chance? Like as in, as he's looking through, maybe I better also now a frail. No, that's not what's happening. The Holy Spirit is using the prophetic to meet urgent needs. So if you realize, every time they are ministering to somebody prophetic and they call the person out, they don't just call the person. And say, Your name is this. Your name is that. This that that that. Hey. While clap for Jesus, you can sit down. There is always a need that needs to be met. There is always something urgent that needs to happen in the present. So it's just a tip to you. If if you if if you want to be ministered to, then have something in mind urgent enough 
that you believe that I cannot live here unless you address this thing. Just what he'll call you. If you like, can try. <laughs> so it's just a key on the side. If you don't have anything urgent like that in your spirit, then just believe God. General, as the prophet is speaking, take the words he's saying then and take it personal. Okay? Yeah. That one is just a tip I felt like sharing with you. Psalm 84. Oh, no. Not Psalm 84. Just a minute. Let me try and find this. Not Psalm 84. Good. Found it. Psalm 84, verse 9. Psalm 84, verse 9. If I check which of the fans is making the noise, then lower it. Psalm 84, verse 9. It says that, O oh God, look with favor upon the king, our shield. Show favor to the one you have anointed. <laughs> now, look at verse 10. Are you ready for verse 10? Okay, it's been this day. It says, A single day in your courts is better than a thousand L anywhere else. See, Priscilla, do you know that the day God grants you favor and a very wealthy person says that I want to be a blessing to you, come to my office. Even if he says because of his tight schedules, he will have only two minutes with you. And in that two minutes, he asks you, so what exactly are you doing? Like, what do you know? Okay, I want to help with this. This is see my pay. Do you know that that two minutes in the presence of that great person will probably be more valuable than your 25 years in school? David said, a single day in your court is better than a thousand elsewhere. In other words, when I value what we receive when we come in the presence of God for one day, when I value it, if it doesn't matter if it's Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, he said it doesn't matter whose presence, no matter how, what kind of businessman it is, no matter who the president, he said that a day in the court of God he said, what I value it is better than a thousand anywhere else. And anywhere else means anywhere else. If the presence of God has so much value and so much power, how can we come every day and our lives are still the same? By the way, your life is still not the same. Yeah, you have changed. Look, look at you, you have changed. Be with God today, look at you. Some people went through what you went through, they could have died. Some people went through what, what you went through, they committed suicide. Yeah. Some people went through what you went through and they broke down forever. They've still not recovered up to today. Some of them are old men and they look back at life with bitterness. You have been through and it was just a chapter of your life. Oh. Then listen, he says... I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live the good life in the homes of the wicked. In other words, we've been getting it wrong all this while. I've heard people say, you'll be following Pastor Sir, and don't, don't think about your life. So now, David has just revealed to us that it will be better, copy, listen, it will be better to be opening the door for people to enter the washroom like that is what we know you for. When, when after church, if there is some extra food, we give you some leftover to eat, and then you sleep in the church, opening washroom doors. He said it is better to do that than 
to be working for some Lebanese man is giving you 8,000 a week. He said them to live their good life. It's called their good life. Not a good life, their good life. <laughs> so, I, I, I have, you see, the next verse after this is the common verse. But the common verse came as a result of this. The guy said that common verse because of a revelation he had. So, in other words, God, I, you see, I went for one program. I was telling, I was telling my media people, and, and, at the back of the shirt, what are they written? Yeah, he said, at the back of the shirt, he said, before you complain, because the guys were working hard, before you have any funny thoughts that, hey, these guys, they are walking up and down working, they have printed it boldly at the back of their shirts, I am a church mouse. Yeah, so in case you want to tell me that, hey, but why are you giving me all your life? No, this is, this is I'm a church mouse, I like it. I will, I, I will like, will be in the house of the Lord. This, this is where we want to be. Because we know that a day here, just a day with him, is better than a thousand anywhere else. Let me sleep in the church. Let me be insulted for being in the church. Let it look like I'm wasting my life in the church. But I know something you don't know. Which is that a day in the presence of the Lord is better than a thousand anywhere else. And I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of the Lord. No, no. What, what is there in the house? Of, no. Where, what is there to brag about? No, no, this is the house of God. Everybody else is a small boy before God. Every, no, no, you, the big, big professors, the big, big men, the billionaires, they go and kneel down for pastors to pray for them. No, they are, they are not kneeling down to God. Though. They are kneeling down to the one God sent. So who is a big boy in the, I'm asking that, who is a big boy in the house of the Lord? No, this, this is a place. A, we are God's boys and girls. We have come. It doesn't matter your age. It, it takes a certain revelation that a day, just a day, is enough. Just one encounter is enough. You see somebody say, I want to become rich. This. Then the friend will book an appointment for him to go and meet a malam. And it is a big day in his life. Every service is a big day to you. Every time there is a program, it is a big day to you. Every time there is an opportunity to spend time in the presence of God, it is a big appointment that has been booked for you to go and have an encounter of your lifetime. It's, it's like a new time to move to the next level. Every time. That is why my life will not be the same as that of my colleagues. I have a different pattern for life. My pattern for life is that I go into the presence of God, I receive words that materialize. Now, now, don't worry. It's not, don't, don't, don't worry. Read verse 11. Look at this. For the Lord God. No, no, read, read, sorry, read verse 9. Verse 9. Show me verse 9. What's the verse 9 we read first? Then, then go to 11. Let me check. why a day in the course of the Lord is better than a thousand. Why? Because he said for the Lord. In other words, when you come, this is the reason why he said for the Lord God is our son and our sheep. This is called a grace of exemption. Do, do you know what it means for God to be your sheep? In other words, when they are sucking everybody from the place, you have protocol. <laughs> There is somebody who comes as your shield. The, 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 his name is God. Do, do you know what the son does? He says he's our son. And I, do you know what the son does? A lot of time we think the son gives light. 
that's one of the least function of the sun. The apex function of the sun is that it gives life. The sun first gives life before it gives light. Right? Our science students, right? So through the light is releasing, the plants get to undergo their photosynthesis. Then, then the, the, the animals that eat green, leaf, green leafy vegetables and all of those things, the herbivores, they eat. Then, then the carnivores eat those ones. Then we come and eat. So, so in other words, if there is no sun, there will be no trees. If there is no tree, we can't even breathe first. Not to talk about coming to eat. So the sun is a source of life. When the sun is around, life moves on. <laughs> so the cycles of life can continue because the sun is present. God says that you, you, you don't need money for the cycle of your life to continue. Like you, no, listen to the words I'm saying. Like you don't need money so that like tomorrow you can go out, you can go for your meeting, you can do that. You don't need connection. He says there is another engine that is running on the side. There is another engine that is running on the side. He says the engine is that every time you go to church, every time you come in the presence of the Lord, he says God becomes your son. God becomes your son. God becomes your life. God becomes your source. God becomes what vitalizes you. He keeps the cycles of your life running. He becomes our sun and our shield. I was, I was very happy. You know, sometimes preacher to young people is different because a lot of young people all they do is they sleep, wake up, study, write exams, and then sleep again, right? So sometimes the testimonies and things you share are not practical and relevant to them. But grown-ups, to some extent, can relate a little more with the lot of things the Bible is saying, right? Now watch. It. So I remember during one of our, our prayer meetings, I said, oh, for all those here. The Lord is telling me to tell you that your after school is sorted out. Then I added, I said, when others are busy looking for protocols for good postings for national service, you don't worry. Just the fact that you are in this meeting, God says that your, your national service is sorted out. But you see, these things continue to remain as words of encouragement until they face life and they realize that thank God I invested in prayer you remember I used to tell you I said you will one day turn and say God thank you that I invested in prayer I used to tell you that see one day when things are working a certain way don't be proud don't forget remember that one day I was under a certain tree praying and I was saying that God is the only connection I know God is the only connection I know. The Lord will do for me what no man can do. No matter what I step, God is my connection. God is my connection. God is my connection. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. God is my connection. A palabra, a palabra. Hey, payabada, hey, payabada. A paragadagababaduasha. God is our connection. A paragabadagamamanduasha. No matter where we step, we have the Lord on our side. Hey. Frakontelegabaduasha. No matter where we step, we have God on our side. Daniel had God as his connection. And let me tell you, God is a protocol man pass. Not the protocol. Daniel was thrown in lions then to God sent angels to tell them to shut their mouth. Even in the lions, then there were still connections there. God knew somebody who knew the lions. Hey! God, in the lions, then too, God knew somebody who knew the lions. 
he told her, oh, he's my guy, I beg, are you guys? Hey! hey. They finish, now the national service postings are coming out. This one will come and say, Commander, do you believe it? I, I don't know, I was posted to this, this, this place in Accra, no protocol. Then I'll smile. This one will come. This, come. Now I've counted the sixth person has come who were in the prayer meeting. So, come on, this is, I was posted to, I don't even believe it. My friends who do the protocol, some of them, they posted them, the protocol didn't work. This did it. I, I said, hey, you see, what was happening that day, if it was a joke to you, it was a joke to you. If it was serious to you, it was serious to you. But here is the thing. This is what, and you see, I know very well that even those who didn't get in code post things to um, places that look diplomatic and places that look a certain class. It's only because God has work for them to do somewhere. That's why they were sent there. Like, what has happened is that now that aspect of the education was completely arranged by God. Some of them will go to the place to go and go and meet people who transform their lives. Yeah. 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 And these things are practical. He says, God, for the Lord is our sun and our shield. And he gives us grace and glory. He brings beauty to your life every time. So every time you step in church, you become more beautiful. And, and the beauty is not only restricted to facial beauty. I'm talking about beauty to your life. You see, the guy who is not into these things will not understand. Oh, yes. Like the person who is not into these things will not understand. Oh, Kabadi Baba Baba Shon Vase. Ah, Parabada Baba Baba Yunsa Brada Gababa do a shovel here, Kumas. Ragida Gababa do a shovel, Ita Paraba Mamma do a shavers. go to verse 1 for me. Some of you, some of you, your friends take you out, right? And then you go to the place. He's like, hey, the place was nice. That's what David says every time he goes to church. That's what David says every time he goes to the presence of the Lord. And when I say every time he goes to church, I don't want you to immediately picture or fixate your mind on a Sunday service. I'm talking about every, every time the people of God congregate. Even if it's 10 Christian friends that come together, you happen to meet behind the backyard or somewhere. I, I, I'm, that is also part of what I'm talking about. How come these set of seats are empty? I've been reserved for ministers. Oh, okay. I think some people can come. Is anybody here? Oh, I, think, I think two from any ministers should come. He leaves. He's feeling it. So I think some people can come.
If alay to bradis o brahande ko vraste gushpa. If alig na ande sa lahar tevish miyuta. Hey, para so 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 mono 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 Until I overflow, I wanna run over, over. I wanna run over. Feel me? You want me to beg you before you sing along? No, I'm even talking to the the people who sing for me. I wanna. You want me to beg you before you sing along? I wanna run over. So he says that I was glad when they said to me, Hey, no, how lovely. A genuine baby, the mind is ahead of the body. <laughs> the spirit is preaching in one day, 10 minutes later. The mind is preaching now. So two messages are being preached at the same time. Mercy, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's army. Verse I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the court of the Lord. With my whole being, body and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. David said, when I go into the house of the Lord, I'm never quiet. Hey! hey! long yes I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord then listen he says with my whole being my whole being my whole being my body and my soul the seat of his emotions he said I will shout joyfully to the living God Sit down. Listen, Paul said, he said, of, 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 of the demons and the idols, he says, though they have, he said, he said, they are dumb, they cannot speak. They are deaf, they cannot hear. So have you ever been to the shrine? Or have you ever seen any videos of the shrine? You watch Nigerian movies? Yeah, so you've seen the shrine. Now, do you, do you see what they do in the shrine? So they, they, they slaughter something, they pour the blood on the assumed God, right? And then they are doing their things and they are shouting, they are jumping, they are singing, they are dancing, they are doing whatever they are doing. And then, I'm saying, what did they call it? A com is You know? I don't know if they are dancing, I don't know what dance is called. So they're dancing and they are exerting the emotions to the peak, to the climax over something that cannot talk, over something that cannot move, over something that cannot answer back when you speak. David said, Not my God. Listen, listen. He said, He said, With my whole being, my body, and soul, I will shout joyfully to the world. The word living over there is intentional. You know, other people are dead. We serve the living God. On, on Sunday, after preaching in church, oh, Derek, where is Derek? Derek Donko. He's still not here. Somebody call him and tell him that I've asked for him. Anyway, so, I mean, I don't know why you should leave this person and go and be working. A son of the house, you should leave this place and go and be looking for money. I was glad when they said, Let us come to the house of the Lord. I thought, What you will get from here, you worked 50 years, you will not get. One day here can open a door for you that will summarize 100 years of your life. Now, I was in church, and then after I finished preaching, one of my small boys in Sunday school, 
and I preached in the main church. So one of my small boys in Sunday school asked for him. And he said that he's having terrible pain in his elbow. And so I wanted to tell him that, oh, we should stretch it and then, you know. I, I don't know. I wanted to just say something to him. So I go, I mean, he's very young. So but let me just say something to him. Then he go, go. Then I just felt a conviction. When, when you want him to grow and know that God is alive, like when, like when, if not now, when do you want him to now come and know that God is that? Like, do you want him to finish school, university, or he should start working, married as a married man before he knows God is alive? As it's because now, so like your elbow is bending, yeah, okay, okay, then you go, don't worry, it'll be fine. So I just said something to brush, then I turned him and I said, You might come. I said, you said, where is pain? He said, I said, is it the physical pain? Said, yes, inside. Like when he stretched his pain, he was even, he couldn't even stretch. And I said, now, watch this. You see, all what I said today, everything I did today, it wasn't motivation. It, God is alive. God is real. And when we talk to God, he will heal you. So should we talk to God? He said, yes. Then I said, okay, stretch your hand now. So he did this. Then I said, now, in the name of Jesus, release the power of God to soothe that arm. We speak every discomfort in the arm disappears now. Then God said, no, that's not the way. Then I changed. I said, we speak that every discomfort in this arm fades away. <laughs> it fades away. Then now I said, now stretch it out. Then he said, I said, is this still pain? He said, yes. I said, stretch it again. He said, it, that's reduced. I said, if it was one to ten, how much has it? He said, that's reduced by seven. Then I said, stretch it out again. He was stretched. I said, how much? Is he said, seven. I said, oh, then let's talk to God again. So we talked to God again. Then I said, stretch again. How much? Is he said, oh, now by nine. So when, when he does this, then he feels it inside small. I said, should we talk to God again? He said, oh, now it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. When? When else? When? When, when? when should we let him know that we serve a living God? Pastor Ben. You are welcome. Please come, please come, please come. Beautiful. Mm, you As a man, Lady Favor, please, please follow, please follow. Follow seat. Okay. I think we will move over. We are, um, Fred, please come this way and let the man's rib be beside him. This is Pastor Ben and Minister Favor. So welcome. All right. So we can sit down. So then verse 3 says what? Verse 3 says what? Even the sparrow finds a home. And the sparrow and the swallow built her nest and raises her young at a place near your altar. O Lord of the heaven's armies, my king and my God. He says that the sparrows, even the sparrow finds a home. And then the swallow will deliberately look for where it's close to an altar and go and build his house. Huh? This one. What joy for those who can live in your house. Always singing your praises. What joy. Like, what an honor it is that for some interesting reason, in your time, the people of God used to congregate. There was a place called the house of God. And there was a place where you can come to, to fellowship in one accord with God. <laughs> what joy for you. <laughs> what joy for you. Listen, this thing is not a joke. This thing is not a joke. When was it? Was it last week? He was sharing a testimony with me. Chief was sharing a testimony with me. A lady said she had not had a menses for how many months. Give him a mic. Hello, hello. Okay. So my, my sound engineer slash mighty mighty assistant yeah. 
my, my resident pastor. <laughs> now, he was sharing a wonderful testimony with me. Uh-huh, Chief, what were you saying? Tim? Yeah, the, the lady sent me a text message and she said she had not had her menses for six months. For, yeah, for six months she had been without her menses. For six months. She's a young girl. She's living a good life, so she's not that anything. Then she's afraid. No, she's not had her menses for six months. Uh-huh. And then when you, you, know, you said that you were going to come to, you were going to visit UCC. Her school. Her yeah, school. University of Cape Coast. Mm-hmm. Is that when you were ministering on one of the days, you prayed for healing. And when you were praying for them, she said to believe the Lord and place her hands at the place at, 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 on her abdomen. Okay. And then after you said the word, she believed it. And then she says the next day when she went back to the house, she was having stomach pain so she placed her hands on the abdomen again and then declared the same prayer you prayed the other day she's like she's killing two beds with one scoop me i prayed one prayer for you she had applied it to the menstrual issue yeah. and then the following day, stomach pain she went into the past took the prayer and brought it in again <laughs> amazing uh-huh and then she said she got healed and just right after that her menses also started flowing <laughs> Six. This is six months. A six month issue. Ease of living. Six month issue. Oh, God is good. We serve a living God, Pastor Bajuna. A living God. One, two, two, verse one. Psalms. So we'll be closing. We'll be closing in time soon. So I'm going. Tonight will be awesome. Tonight will be awesome. Tonight is awesome. Hey. glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So, like, we, we quote this one nicely, Pastor Bajuna, and like, it's, it sounds like, oh yeah, I was glad when they said to me. So, guys, David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. Oh, oh, is somebody glad you're in the house of the Lord? Oh, then lift up your handkerchief and give the Lord a shout. Oh, who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. No, but from the previous text, now we understand that there was a weight of revelation, of understanding that David had. That is why he said that, like, I become glad. It's like good news to me when they say, Charlie, there is a meeting. He it, said, there is something I understand. There is something I understand. Charlie, things happen in the house of God. Yeah. Things happen in here. And so, you are blessed when you come. Because, because, because you get to receive seeds. You get to receive real things. Right. Pastor Ben. Another Pastor Ben is hiding in the congregation. Pastor Ben, please be there for me. The front is free. So, please be there for me. Alright. It's a blessing. Okay, so... Now, I'll say a few things that we can do. You see, I explained to you that when the sower goes out to sow, that's God giving his word, right? And I've explained to you that God doesn't give material, God doesn't necessarily give material things. Like I said, like I need a car, then God gives you the car. I've explained to you that his word is the car. So when God said he, he he calls those things that be not as though they were. Not he creates those things that be not as he calls. He, he calls it. He says car. Then the car is there. It, there was no car here. God said car. Then it appears. 
So those things that be not, all of a sudden they, they are there. As if they were already there. He says, he didn't have to say, let's cut the fig tree. Let's, do, let's damage it. No. He says, no one will eat of you again. Once he released that seed, whatever process need to go on so that no one will ever eat of the fig tree again, it went on. So, when God wants to give you something, he gives the seed. He give, you will drop the seed. 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 So, God wants to give you a beautiful marriage. You will drop the seed. Say, you see, your marriage will be beautiful. That's all. That's all. Right? Yeah. Somebody will tell you. Somebody will say that, hey, your marriage will be beautiful. Now, you just need to believe that that was a seed from God. And that is it it will germinate in your heart and you'll be surprised. Yeah. Now, if that seed is the word of God, then that whole concept that we hear that somebody can steal something that belongs to you, it's true. That's the thing. <laughs> it is true. You know, sometimes we try to make the local guys look like they are too local. But maybe it's the way they are saying it that you don't like it. But it, the truth is that they are saying it. And it's true. Because he says that when some of the seeds fell on the roadside, the enemy came to steal them. So I'm saying that if God's word are seed and everything God wants to give you is seed, then that means that inside that, those seeds that were on the roadside were people's marriages, were people's certificates, were people's jobs, were people's impact that they were to make in life. He says, Solomon, because you have asked for an understanding heart and not wealth or riches or the, the life of your enemies. He said, I'm giving you fame. It, it was just the word though. That was all. God never said, Solomon, meet me here. Let me give it to you. No. That was it. After God spoke that word in a dream. When Solomon woke up, that was all. He started becoming famous. That was all. Then he said, I'll also give you wealth. So as a king, he was wealthy anyway. As the king's son, he was wealthy anyway. And as somebody who had wisdom, there was a certain, because the Bible says that there is wealth at the right hand of wisdom. So there was a certain level of wealth he would hit. But now God added a certain level of wealth that all of these could not hit. He added that one too in his word, the seed. But guess what? If Solomon had joked, the enemy could have stolen that seed. So I'm saying, when we come into the house of God, God becomes your shield. Chief, let me go back there. Psalm 84. He says, God becomes your son and your shield. So you are able to be shielded from things that belong to you that can be taken away. I think verse 11. Or 10, 11. For the Lord God is our son and our shield. This is this when you come to that. So, so you get shielded. So a prophet, hey, you this guy, you will be great. Nothing can stop me from because I, I keep fellowshipping in the house of the Lord. from Matthew chapter 3. We're going to read a very long scripture, right? Are you ready? Beautiful. Beautiful. Alright. So let's read quickly, then we end. Uh-huh. It says, John 3, uh, Matthew, Matthew 3, verse 1. Matthew 3, verse 1. Quickly. Hey, should we bring you here, but the enemy will not steal your seed in Jesus' name. In those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching his message. He began pre- his message was repent of your sins and turn to God for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, he is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord to come and clear the road for him. 
John's clothes were woven from the coarse camel hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he ate with locusts and wild honey. Wow. People from Jerusalem and from all Judea and all over the Jordan Valley went out to see him and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed, who warned you to flee from God's coming wrath? <laughs> Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we are saved, but we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming. Someone say, but someone is coming. Someone say, but someone is coming. He says, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am so much greater that I'm not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, John was preaching revival. You see, today in our day, like we preach revival, right? We say that, Charlie, God is going to do this and God is going to do that and God is going to do this. We preach revival. We say that God is going to do this and, and God is about to do this through the young people and God is about to do that. And we say things that God is about to do. Right? John was doing the same. So much greater than I, that I am not worthy even to be his slave. And carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He says when this guy comes, he will change the elements of baptism. I don't want to go into that. John said that before me, no one baptized. I'm the one who brought this whole baptism thing. Immersing in water because I need to prepare you for the coming of the king. And what is the purpose of my baptism? The purpose of my baptism is to signify that you have truly repented of your sins. But he says, this one cannot do much because after this baptism, you are still subjected to your own life and your decisions. But there is one coming after me. He will use the original ingredients. And he will use the Holy Spirit and fire. I said, today we are not talking about baptism, so I'll not go into it. Verse 12. <laughs> God said we should. Hey, God said. Are you sure you are listening to God? When he sent his messenger and said, the messenger said, that the God who sent me said I should use water. But somebody who is coming after, he will not use this ingredient again, Isaac. He's going to use the water. He's ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into the, his barn, but burning the chaff with never-ending fire. Verse 13. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. Jennifer. Isn't it amazing? John was preaching of something that is to come. He was telling the people that there is one who is coming, coming after me. He, when he comes, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. He's the revival we've been waiting for. He's the thing that God is about to do. As John was preaching, the guy was in the ground. For, you see, for a lot of time we talk about what God is about to do as if he's about to do it. But it's not everything that God is about to do that he's about to do. There are certain things God is about to do that he did. So sometimes what God is about to do is already happening. All of us gathered here beautifully, right? And trust me, I don't want this to be another meeting you've come and you've gone. Okay? And I want you to hear me as I say this. And listen carefully. 
in this season, God is doing something great, right? For this season. God is not about to do something great. God is doing something great for this season. God is not about to start something great for this season. God started something great for this season. God is not about to cause a great revival. A revival has been happening since 2012. God is not about to use women and children mightily. God has been using women and children mightily. When God gives a word, do you know when the word is fulfilled? When you believe. So God could have given a word in 20, 2001 and you believed in 2052. That's when it will start working for you. And you would think that is when God started. But that was not the day he released the word. So I'm saying that there is something major that the Lord is doing. And in the scenario of John, just as John the Baptist was fully convicted about something the Lord was about to do and was preaching what God was about to do, not knowing what God was about to do was happening right in his midst. I want to announce to you guys that there is something that God is doing. And it is our responsibility to apply whatever we can and whatever we have to what God is doing. This is when men will go through it. I used to like it rough. I do call someone and they will whisper something to the ears. I'm like, hey. Then I'll be looking at their lips to see if I can read what they are saying. All right. So, family, I want to welcome Elisha to give us a wonderful song. Glory. Glory. Let's begin to speak in the language of the Spirit. Your will be done, O God. Your will be done, O God. Reko Sharianda Tayada Balianda Pa. Rinda Palianda Diadba. Reko Ratilianda Pa. Ima Rako Shevrendes Riko Talianda Ma. Rida Balea Russo Tolianda Ba. Riko Shatilian. Yanda Riakapa. Ira do Shadia Kapali and Aba. Move within us tonight. Among us tonight. Move among us tonight, Father. Riko Radili and Apali and Aba. Kora Shetili and Aba. Rina Mama Shoteri and Aba. Rikun Tapeli and Apari and Aba. Imara Dia Karado Shudili and Aba. Rida Kora Dizina do Shetili and Aba. Rida. Akilo Rosso Tali and Aba, Rida Makoro Jotali and Aba, Rindo Ko Abelia Sonte, I Pari and Aba, Eco Pari and Ama, Rida Brazil, Daba Sontolo and Aba, Rego Shotali and Ama, Lia da Baraduce, Rezina Mashotali and Aba, Rita Catili and Aba, 
Rikora vasora tilianda pa Imalea kopelianda pa Rikora vadia kapa Inhabits our worship Inhabits our worship Inhabits our worship Father Inhabits our worship Father Inhabits our worship Look at our hearts Look at our hearts Father Riko sharianda pa Libara Rikoda piada pa lianda ba Help us to focus on the spirit. Help us to focus on the spirit. Help us to focus on the spirit. Riko shatili anaba. Riko tali na bosa di anama. Riko rabali anda di asora di agaba. Riko raveson tali anama. Rida iko peri anda ba. Rika rasho tali anaba. Iko redi vazonte. Riko shavrandi anda ba. Imala radi agapa lava. Shavali and the Soroko Tape, Mante Teli and Aba, Riko and Zontolu and Apaliade, Riko Shovali and Aba. Thank you, Father. Welcome, sir. So I'm going to be singing two songs tonight. For the first, for the first song, some of you might have already might have already heard it. And if you have, this is just a reminder. All right. Johnny. Oh Johnny. Johnny, Johnny used to go to church when he had no money in his pocket. Johnny was always faithful in his work. Whenever the door was open, he was at church. Johnny's prayer was the Lord bless me. I need a job, I'm on my face. God bless Johnny with the job he was not qualified for. Now he hardly finds time for church. Oh, Johnny, remember where you're coming from and where your life could have been. God blessed you with a better life, and now you hardly find time for him. Oh, Johnny, remember where you're coming from and what life could have been. God blessed you with a better life And now you hardly find time for him When you were nothing you used to work in his presence Slowly patient waiting on him Now you have a good NSS placement And a good job now And you hardly find time for him Remember when you were on your knees Saying Lord need a car see if you bless me i would go to church more often god they bless you and where did you buy oh johnny remember where you're coming from and where your life could have been god blessed you with a better life and now you hardly find time for him oh johnny remember where you're coming where your life could have been God blessed you with a better life and now you hardly find time for him you used to pray before you go to bed even thank him for every little slice of bread remember when you could not afford to buy your shoes now you can't buy any style and color that you choose why can't you teach your children how to pray? Your mother taught you, that's why you're even blessed today. Satan's trying hard to keep you occupied, but God has been so good, he has never left your side. Oh, Johnny, remember where you're coming from and where you could have been. God blessed you with a better life and now you are. Oh, 
know, Johnny, remember where you're coming from and where your dad could have been. God bless you with the better life and now you hardly find time for it. Thank you.
speak in the language of the spirit wherever you are. Rade faraga de shobranda da babadi washava. A paraga de shobranda da babadi washava do atai. A paraga da babadi washava rata pa 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 ye ko para son 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 rando ko ko yo ko. Hey faraga ba da babadi washava rita tora ba mashara. We thank you, Spirit of God. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can have your seats. Somebody give me a shout. Prophet's place on the Monday. I saw Prophet. 
and I was so excited. I was like, Ink. I saw him today in my dream, and now I'm seeing him here. I said, like, as for today, I'll go and say hello. As for today, I'll go and say hello. So I remember I went to take, I went to say hello to Prophet, and I took a picture with him. And and Chief, do you have the picture? I don't see don't have it. Okay. But I, I took a picture with Prophet. It was, it was, and I was just so excited. I gave him my shoes. I said, baby, look, I call my star baby, by the way. So I said, baby, look who I took a picture with today. You know, I was so excited. A year later, you know, that was earlier this year, I met Prophet Love again at Prophet, Prophet's place, and we took another picture. And this time, there was something different because I felt an unusual connection to him. It was, it was quite strange. I felt a very unusual connection to him. And I introduced myself to him, told him about the family. It was, it was wonderful. And the love, the love with which he spoke to me, he received me. I just said, oh, the man has... He has dumbfounded me. He has lemonized me. <laughs> and, and it was a blessing. So I came home. I told all the leaders about it. And, you know, I just knew that God had given me someone. God had given me someone I could go to as a mentor. Someone I could go to to speak to. Someone I could go to, you know. And I still believe in God that in time, the full fruition of this relationship will be birthed, you know. That from then until now, Prophet Love has showed me unusual love. The first time I went to visit his, his place of worship, I remember he said, tell him to wait because I want to have enough time with him. I was like, oh, Charlie, today is the day. <laughs> and I remember the first time we spoke, right after we finished speaking in the office, Prophet was like, you know what? Tuesday, what are you doing? I said, Please, I'm free. <laughs> he said, come home. I said, hey, this was like, it was all happening like a dream to me, you know, and I went home and said, come with your leaders sometime. I said, oh boy, we are coming. And we went again, and then prophet uttered some words. He said, you people can come into my prayer closet. You people can come into my closet every month and come and pray long hours of prayer. Hey! See, I didn't know what to do to myself. I, I just didn't know what to do to myself. I told the leaders, at least once every month, we have some six hours prayers to go and do with the prophet himself. And today, Prophet Love, as we said in the poster, tonight is a dream come true. And we mean every single word of it. Not just me, but the entire... Hey, let's give it up for our brother, Philip Ajali! <laughs> <laughs> it's such an honor. Please, Mr. Oliver. Mr. Philip, we have a nice seat for you over here. <laughs> what an honor. Tonight is a dream come true. <laughs> what an honor, what a blessing it is. So, my love, we mean every word of it. Like, Wow. So yes, this this was the second picture. It was it was just it was just a day, a day to remember. And we thank God today that Prophet is here. Prophet, we are the kingdom ambassadors. We we are we are we are a family. Like literally a family. We just we just meet as a family to spend time in God's presence. And you are you are a major blessing to us. Not not just a blessing, a major one to us. And I don't know how we should say thank you, but you know, the Lord has said a lot of things to us. And so we want you to know that to a large extent, we are committed to you for the rest of our lives. We love you so much, sir. And I don't know what else I can say, but I want to talk about how Prophet Love has been a blessing to so many other people, but I know it's not necessary because I can feel your heart boiling. Like, it's, it's almost not necessary. Prophet Love, we love you so much. <laughs> we are so honored to have you here today. Tonight is indeed a dream come true. We thank God for also surprising us with another great blessing to us. Mr. Philip Ajale! 
night and night tonight. I just saw my water garden family also walk in. Wow. <laughs> so we thank God so much for tonight. And family, let us rise to our feet, speaking in the language of the spirit. And with all respect and in all humility, I want us to walk out to the pulpit. The man of God a set man for this generation to give us in right proportion, line upon line, precept upon precept, in equal and balanced proportion, the truth of God for this time. I want us to welcome up the podium man, a man that is sent from God to us. Tonight, I want us to receive every word that will come from his mouth with all our heart. I want us to not only hear what he will say, but determine to do everything that he will say. And family, with a loud shout, let us welcome Prophet Isaac Love Papu. <laughs> about um, five minutes then Mr. Phil does five minutes he can't come here not sing then we we'll continue from there right so let's, let's work on. just lift up your hands to the heavens let me have a little volume I just trained my voice so help me. Just speak in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Just speak in the Spirit. Just fellowship in the Spirit. I open my no no maradio sha Camilo maramico sha baradio ra I am a maro Thank you Jesus My people the most beautiful among thousands and thousands, my beloved, the most beautiful among thousands, we say thousands, they my beloved. The most beautiful Hamilton thousands in thousands will say my beloved oh, Hamilton thousands in thousands. Yes, you will say yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you 
Kopas ke balai. Hey, come on, Yeshua. Hey, ah, we give you praise. We shout, Yeshua.
Lord, you are here. 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 When 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 you are here, oh, oh. When you are here, when you are here, when you are here, and you are here, when you are here, and you are here, and you are here, and you are here. See that sweet atmosphere. We are baptized in fire now. We are baptized in glory. We are baptized in fire. We are baptized in power. We are baptized in the cloud of glory. See the Lord in His glory. See the Lord glory with glory. He's glory with glory. He's glory with glory. He's glory with glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We adore you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. There is a glory here. See. I'm going to try to do my best. I, I, I feel a strong resistance in my spirit. But I'm going to do my best to control myself to teach you something before we pray now I want to teach you quickly what I call the culture of the spirit the culture of the spirit now let's glide in the book of Daniel chapter number one let's see if we can read at least the first ten chapters then we can pick it up from there the Bible says that in the third year of the reign of King Jehoiakim, King of Judah, came the book of Nezah, King of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, King of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God now follow this very carefully because your life will never be the same again 
the verse 3 says and the king speak unto Ashpanes the master of his eunuchs that he should bring setting of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes verse 4 children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding signs and such as hard ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the childies now follow where we are going now from the verse 5 especially and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat now note that first of all when you read the ending of the verse uh, 4 he says whom they might teach the learning and the tongue the word tongue that means language of the chaldeans the verse 5 says and the king appointed them daily provisions of the king's meat note that he says and the wine note that too and which he drank so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king now among these were of the children of judah daniel Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. Observe that names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belshazzar, and unto Hananiah of Shadrach, unto Michelle, Meshach, and unto Azariah Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portions of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself now god had brought daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs now time will fill me to go further into um, all that i want to share from the book of daniel uh, to enlighten us on what i call the culture of the spirit now the bible tells us that israel was in jerusalem and out of rebellion uh, god handed them over to babylon as slaves now when israel entered into the land of babylon the king nebuchadnezzar actually asked that they be appointed a uh, man of no blemish who were skilled to stand before the presence of the king uh, and there was a, a qualification or there was a training or there was a certain culture that the king wanted to imbibe in their souls before they could approach him and serve his purposes now I want to base my teaching on the culture of the spirit on some realities that this verse begins to epitomize to us in the light of our walk with God so when they were being prepared there were eight things that was supposed to serve as an element of the culture that the king wanted to uh, govern their lives with now remember that Daniel and his brethren were in the land of Jerusalem just like the Bible tells the believer that you have come to Mount Zion to the heavenly Jerusalem but they ended up in Babylon remember though we are in Zion we are also in this world so Jerusalem represents our original home in the spirit and Babylon represents our temporal journey in the world and Nebuchadnezzar represents the God of that world who happens to be Satan, who is called the God of this world. Now, remember when they were brought into Babylon, 
the king had a strategy and the purpose of that plan was to remove the Jewish culture from their lives to adapt to the new system that they found themselves in observe that so first of all the first thing that was supposed to change was their language that's number one number two was their diet I'm getting somewhere now number three was their wine That's what they drank. We're getting somewhere. Number four was their literature, their philosophies, their spiritual, in fact, their education. Are you following this thing? Number five was their training. Mm. Number six was their name. The word name means identity. (laughs) Number seven, as we proceed, you realize that Daniel interpreted a vision of Nebuchadnezzar about him being the golden part of the image that he saw. And Nebuchadnezzar designed a golden image and asked for worship. And they asked Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to bow down to that God, and they refused. So, uh, the next culture that uh, the king wanted to change was their worship. Then, if you will remember, um, in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, the verse 5, uh, the Chaldeans sought to. Um, afflicts Daniel but before they did that you notice that in Daniel chapter 6 the verse 5 the Bible says something I love that too much he says then said these men we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God what he's saying is that we can't find anything about this Daniel the only thing we can do to Daniel is to help him break his spiritual laws in his walk with God Now, that is telling us that before the devil attacks any believer, he first lures that believer to break spiritual laws in the spirit governing his work with God. And in context, from the next verse, we realize that they they designed uh, and signed a certain um, uh, law that for 30 days, no one was supposed to make supplication to God. And, And the fact was that the new Daniel was praying three times a day. So by making that decree for 30 days, no supplication would be made unto God. And in that light, the new Daniel will either have to break the law of his God in keeping his devotional watch or to obey the king's command and not have devotion with God. And this will shock you. Daniel preferred to spend the night in a lion's den than, than to live a day without prayer. I repeat myself. Daniel preferred to spend the night in a lion's den than to live a day without prayer. Now, that's a serious matter here to those of you who don't want to pray. Now, let me just conclude and then let's go into the message what I'm doing is an introduction <laughs> so so number 8 is what we call prayer or fellowship so now listen to me what Nebuchadnezzar who is a type of the God of this world Satan seeks to achieve is to actually change your culture so that you cannot behave in another way that is not like God so 
Daniel and his brethren represents Christians who have decided to live for Jesus. If you have not decided to live for Jesus, you are not part. I don't know if I'm making sense here. So listen to me. After you get born again, remember though you are from Zion, you are in this world, yet not of this world. But as long as you are in this world, Satan has an agenda for you like Nebuchadnezzar. And the agenda of Satan for you is to change your spiritual culture to adapt. No one in the Bible says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is talking about spiritual culture. Because you need to understand that there are two systems that governs this world. The heavenly system of governance and the earthly system of governance. And, and remember that heaven is a country and it has a culture. The devil also has his kingdom and his kingdom has a culture. So we need to understand that ever since you got born again there is a battle to change your spiritual culture to adapt to a certain pattern that is not like God and the purpose of that culture being changed is so that you will serve the purposes of either God or the devil now listen to me whichever way you find yourself you are servant. You can choose to agree or not. You are serving someone. So the earlier you know this, the better you prepare your heart to adapt to heaven's culture that you may be able to serve the purposes of God. I can tell you many Christians are not serving God's purposes. You know why? I can tell. Listen, listen. I can tell if you are serving God's purposes by how well you have adapted to heaven's culture so listen to me you can you can make noise and say i serve jesus it's not the, it's not your profession i just have to realize your culture listen to me whatever governs you controls you and if you are governed by the world you'll be controlled by the world if you are governed by the word you'll be controlled by the word there's no middle ground no no so listen to me carefully the first thing that Nebuchadnezzar who represents Satan the God of this world wanted to change as part of the cultural system of Babylon which is the type of the world was to change their language now it is through languages that you are able to have conversations and communication with other people so one of the devil's agenda is to bring the believer to a place where his language or mode of communication is worldly now now this is a very important thing i'm sharing with you ask yourself from monday to friday what kind of conversations were you engaged in and let me help you with the key any conversation you had this week ask yourself if jesus was part of it will you continue that conversation You know that kind of conversation I'm talking about? The one you talk at 1 a.m. is a baby. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with that one, no. But when it comes to a place where you begin to ask, can I see a picture of your breast? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> when you get to that place your culture your culture has changed
you know what the Bible says in the book of Malachi chapter 3 the verse 16 he says and they that fear the Lord often speak one to another and the Lord hearkened so do you know that God hears every conversation you have to with one another and you'll be shocked now we're going to read that together one two go then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another and the Lord hearkened now remember that speaking or that conversation was not with God it was with one another but God was part of that conversation now that's very serious and he says and he what had it and a book of remembrance was written <laughs> there are some of you and the things been recorded Listen, I'm teaching you something serious. Tell somebody, delete that chat now. Yeah. Praise God. wanted to change their language the mode by which they communicated listen do you know that in these last days it is hard to find godly conversations among believers check it today when two groups of believers meet they talk about champions league One lady closed from church and saw another lady and said, oh, can I see you for a minute? He says, okay, what's wrong? He said, how much did you buy your hair? <laughs> this verse scared me that the conversations you have with one another God is part of it that chat that voice note that <laughs> no he, let me let me help you listen <laughs> It's a, it's, 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 it's a communication. It's a conversation. Listen, do you know you can be in a room alone? The TV you watch is a conversation. Now, now let me help you. Now, these are serious matters I need to tell you. I'm, I'm talking to those who don't want to, those who don't want to be ordinary again. Because I don't want to be ordinary. Now, if Jesus was sitting in the hall with you watching a movie and they got to a place where there was sex and kissing, yeah. will, question, will you keep watching with Jesus? <laughs> if Jesus was in a room alone with you, will you watch Spartacus? Yeah. Okay. The agenda was to change language. And you see, many Christians think that it's all about fasting and prayer. No. There's a certain consecration that God is waiting before he can anoint you. In Hebrews 1.9, he says, Thou hast loved righteousness and hast hated iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. 
There are some who love righteousness but don't hate iniquity. So, so to them, they won't do what is wrong. But their roommates can do it and they won't talk. He says you have love righteousness. You don't stop there. That love for righteousness must develop a hate for iniquity. I am telling you before God, I hate pornography. I hate masturbation. I know the damage it did to me about 15 years ago. I hate it. It's too filthy for me. It's too filthy for me. So I don't just love righteousness, I hate iniquity. I hate it. It doesn't look good on me. I, I just can't imagine myself. I, oh my goodness. You must hate it. I'm telling you. I hate adultery. I'm telling you. I hate it. So therefore, I will hate any woman that will come in my way. I'll hate you. I don't talk to female after 9.30 on phone. No. I'm not saying copy me. That's how I protect myself. Until it's life and death, you don't call me. We don't chat that time. We are dealing with language issues here. Conversations. Communications. Listen, the devil wants to bring the believer to a place where he doesn't care about the involvement and the content of his conversations. Loose talks. No, the Bible says that just talking cause jesting. He says he must be put away from us as we become saints in Ephesians chapter 5 from the verse 3 to 5. What kinds of conversations comes out from your mouth? It's a proof of who governs your life. There are times you want to be rude, but heaven won't permit. Have you ever driven and someone tried to overtake you? You were trying to catch up the guy to insult him, and you got to the place, you're like, Qua! You remember, he said, Wola Sako Baya. Tell someone language, language. Language. As for as for this one, I'll die. I'll die you. I'll die. Ready? Me woo. Language. Let me tell you something. Yeah. There's a language that does not exist in Zion. They wanted to change the language of Daniel. From the Hebrew tongue to the tongue of the Chaldeans. So what happens was that their accent was going to change. And many don't know that Satan is after your language. He's after your conversations. Do, do you learn to say it is well? I am blessed. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. I bless your name. I give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Language. What do you say? What do you say to yourself? What do you say to others? Listen. Satan wants to govern the culture of your language, your conversation. 
and every Christian must stand his ground. You stand your ground. Number two is your diet. So when when you read that, now many of you don't know why Daniel says he was not going to eat those meats that were offered to him. And I'm sure you'll be like, Daniel, you got meat and you didn't eat meat. Daniel, you meet with meat and you did not meet to eat it. So, you see, if you do in depth study, you understand why Daniel didn't eat it. I'll tell you. Because those meats were defiled. Let me go further. Those meats were offered to their idols before they were brought to the table. So, that meat was presented to another God to honor and worship the God and portions of those meats were brought to the table and they were asked to eat it. And Daniel says, no, I purpose in my heart that I will not be defiled by meat offered to idols Therefore, get me something else. Do you know that the word of God is food? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 5, the verse 14. He says, strong meat belongs to those who are full age. Other versions says matured. Who by reason of use have their senses exercise to discern both good and evil so what he's telling you is that when the word of God which is the meat of God enters your spirit man it will teach you to decipher wrong from right listen to me every other word that comes to you outside of the word of God is there to defy you In 1 Peter chapter 2, the verse 2, he says, Therefore, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Matthew 4, 4, he says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So God's word is meat. God's word is milk. God's word is bread. Daniel says, no, I will not eat this meat offered to idols and presented to me. No, 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 no. Rather, something else. And that something else made him ten times better than those who partook it. Anyone who spends time with the word of God will be found ten times better than his peers. Simple. So, I know why your Bible is still brand new and you don't read it. Because you have taken for granted heavenly meat. Have you forgotten when Israel came out and they were in the wilderness? God rained quail and they ate as meat. He rained manna and they ate. The Bible called that man that manna heavenly meat. So that means that anyone who spends time with the word of God begins to feed himself with spiritual meat. Those words that come from social media are defiled meats. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Arise, eat for thy journey is long. You know what it means? How much you eat determines how much you go. Or how far you go. So listen, most of you can't make this journey. You can't make it. You know why? You don't have enough meat. The journey is long, so eat! And when Elijah adds that 
meat. That cake. That cake was in him so much life that he went for 40 days in the strength of that meat. Oh, you don't know that the rest of your days as a child of God, it is the spiritual meat you imbibe, masticate, chew. That will determine how much and how far you can go as a Christian. I know why you are always depressed. You are eating the wrong meat. I know why you are easily offended. Eating the wrong meat. Hmm. Lazarus called out for Jesus and said, they should send for Jesus because he's sick. Jesus delayed, waited for four days. After four days, when Jesus came, Lazarus was dead. Jesus went to the tomb and called on Lazarus. He says, Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. And guess what? Lazarus came out alive, but he was bound. So when he came, this man was alive. He had resurrected, but he still had bounds on his head, which covered his eyes. He had bounds on his hands, which limited his hands. And he had bounds all over his legs, which affected his walk. And Jesus gave a word and said, remember he's the word of God. Lose him and let him go. Who did that? He sent men to do that. Now we need to understand that Lazarus from the Greek word means the one who God helps. Lazarus represents you and I because we're helplessly dead in the tomb of spiritual death. Remember, a day unto the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years unto the Lord is like a day. Now, Jesus waited four days before he appeared. From the time Adam sinned and died till the time Jesus came was 4,000 years. That was the four days. So, <laughs> when he came to the tomb, it was a picture or a type of God waiting 4,000 years to come to man's tomb spiritually. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus did that to us by his resurrection. And when Lazarus came out alive, it was a picture of how when Christ rose from the dead, we rose together with him. We were alive from the dead. But guess what? He came out alive, but he was bound. That means you can be a Christian who is alive in God, yet bound. Now, hold on with that. When you are bound, your eyes cannot see. So you have to hop. When you are bound, your hands cannot move. When you are bound, your legs can walk. So that means there are many Christians today who are only enjoying that they have eternal life, but they have no eyes, no revelation. They, their hands are not operating their works are ineffective their feet is not operating that means their work with God has been affected they are static in their work with God so the word of God had to send a word that lose him that means when you are born again you come out from spiritual death but it takes that same word that raised you to lose you and listen to me anytime you spend time with your Bible layers of lining is removed from you. Layers upon layers. Layers upon layers are removed. The more you are hearing the word of God who is Jesus Christ. Layers are removed from your head, down to your hands, down to your feet. Then you become a totally free man who has a walk with God. So the second system Nebuchadnezzar wanted to change was the diet. Many, you see, listen, have you realized that when you're watching a full movie for two hours like Avengers, you're able to finish and even ask that they didn't end the movie well and you wanted, you wanted a feedback next time that you add more ministry. But the moment that same believer takes his Bible, he begins to doze off. Have you asked yourself the big question, what is wrong with you? 
What is wrong? What's wrong? When you are reading breaking news, you take your time to read no matter how lengthy it is because you want to hear the content of the bad news. And you have good news. You don't want to read it. Now, question. What would the knowledge of a plane crash you are not involved in do for you? Let me tell you. It is the devil changing your culture. If you spend time more on Facebook than the word book, there's a problem. If you spend time checking your status, when you have not checked your status in heaven, there's a problem. Listen, real joy is not on joy FM. I hope you are aware. You know, many Christians don't know that every CZ movie is in the Bible. Take the story of David. It's a whole CZ movie. You can watch movies on the Bible. In fact, correct movies, I'm telling you. You can watch action film. You, you can watch something. Ah! You don't read your Bible again because because you don't think it's, it's interesting you have no idea what you are missing a man went to heaven and then he realized that to every single day you touch your Bible read your Bible study your Bible meditate upon your Bible there is a citation in heaven for you listen there are four things you do to your Bible Number one, you read it. Number two, you study it. Number three, you meditate upon it. And number four, you memorize it. Have you realized that you find it easy to keep offense without forgetting? But you find it hard to keep a verse of scripture in your mouth. It is telling you the corruption of Adam. What does that to you? The human soul does not forget evil. It forgets good. So it is your duty to train your soul to stay with God. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. That means, you know something? The revelation content you have in your heart is what determines how much you walk over sin. So let me tell you, if you have a sin problem, it's a simple, you have a word problem. I've seen people in addictions and they are crying. They say, like, I don't know what is wrong with me. I'm crying. When your solution is close to you. Many don't know the Bible calls the word of God water. In Ephesians 5.26, the Bible says that he might sanctify and cleanse her by the washing of water by the word. So when you sit by the word, you sit beside the still waters. He washes and cleanses you. You take spiritual baths. There are some of you, you have spiritual crudos, so I'm telling you, you don't bath. You don't bath. Every single time you come to the world, you come for bath. I didn't say in Ephesians chapter 5, the verse 26 tells us the word of God is a cleanser. So the devil wants to give you defiled revelation. And listen to me. Every revelation is died. Every word that comes to you is died. 
Today the devil is selling to us the wrong videos. He's selling to us the wrong images. Listen to me. There are two gates you must you must guard with all your strength, with all your power and with all your might. The first gate is your ear gate. The second gate is your eye gate. Many Christians have looked for trouble for themselves because they did not keep these two gates. You are in addiction because of these two gates. Do you know that your ears and your eyes are agents through which God uses to change you? It's the same with Satan. He wants the two. God wants the two. Satan wants the two. Have you forgotten the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.18 that we all with an unveiled face as we behold as in the mirror the glory of God are changed. So what you behold changes you. The Bible says faith coming by hearing and by the hearing of the word of God. So God, God, God wants you to hear the word. He uses your ear gate to give you faith. He uses your eye gate to give you transformation. Satan is after the same. Oh, you have been called as a prophet. You want to see visions and you have been watching horror movies. You don't get this thing. You know the sad story? The sad story is the one you, you watch at 12 a.m. and you sleep with it. Let me tell you something. Let, I, I need to, you see, many Christians are ignorant. They don't know that every, you see, there is no movie on this earth you watch to be entertained. Any movie you are watching is an education you are being given. Ah, the one who acted War Room, the director was a Christian director. He had an agenda to communicate to Christian marriages that are failing that by prayer you can win your marriage back. So the director made them act to send an education. That unbelieving director is also making people act to send a certain education to you. Many of you don't know. I'm telling you, listen. There are some of you, you saw certain bad movies and it gave you ideas on how to do it. So, you see, you, you, you sinned before you sinned. Now, how do you watch a Chinese movie? The one you call Blowman finishes the killer and then he goes to Buddha and bows down to Buddha. What has Buddha got to do with the movie? He's selling you a god. Why do you realize that these days the movies they act, the protagonist or the one who is the most important in the movie, they attach him to a lesbian? And what happens is that they make you love the man so much that when he asks a lesbian to it, you accept the le lesbian also. So psychologically or subconsciously, you are accepting a system without knowing. Listen to me. Oh my goodness. Entertainment is the devil's version of joy. See, Satan, do you think you are, you are special to Satan for him to entertain you? No, 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 no. He's sending you something. Have you ever watched the movie? About two lovers, Romeo and Juliet. Let's take it to Nigeria. And hold on, hold on, hold on. And they were just five years and they just loved each other. They held hands to the riverside and they just had a good time, you know children who just naturally love themselves and by the time they were seven years old the uncle of Juliet saw that they were getting too close and decided to take him to the city so he takes Juliet from the hands of Romeo and Romeo was crying he puts Juliet in a car and whilst the car was going Romeo was chasing the car he says don't go now hold on now hold on hold on hold on whilst the car was going the, the camera zooms on his legs whilst he's running and then they write 19 years later hold on now 
after that 19 years you saw this guy running again but now with matured legs then Romeo comes into a supermarket whilst walking the supermarket you see the footsteps of another beautiful lady coming now what idea is he giving to you that they should meet right okay all right so now whilst they were going they hit each other on the supermarket and the things falls down he takes it like this hold on i'm not done then it's like wait a minute i know you somewhere romeo is a juliet you hold on then they hug each other then romeo just discovers that juliet is married hold on and he says why didn't you wait for me and he says i didn't know i was going to see you what do you want me to do and he asked him, hey, uh, Juliet, Romeo asked Juliet, are you happy in the marriage? He says, no. Listen, listen, listen. At that time, at that time, uh, something in you wants them to cheat on each other. Do you see what the movie is doing to you? Hold on, I've not finished. Juliet goes home and the husband slaps him. Slaps him. And out of tears, calls Romeo, Romeo says, meet me, meet me in this hotel. And at that time, in your heart, what is happening to you now? You, you think you are watching a movie. Actually, at that time, all your spiritual walls are down. You forget that adultery is a sin against God's law. And everything in you wants the two of them to meet again. And he met him in the hotel and he said, Junior, what, what did he do? To, did he hurt you? He says, No. He hacks him. He says, I don't know what he's doing to me. Then they started kissing. Then they had sex. Then they became bonded. Now he wakes, she wakes up early in the morning, sneaks and goes to visit Romeo. They have a good time. They come back. The husband, Why are you coming from? He says, I was late at work. Then he said, Yes. Then one day, one day, the husband of Julia picks the signal and, and gets the hint that they're in a certain hotel. They're in room 18 and he's, he's going, he opens the door, not knowing it was room 17. You're like, Jesus! You are praying at that time that the husband of Julia doesn't catch them. You that Christian, is now praying that a married man doesn't catch his wife cheating you are forgotten your religion you are forgotten your spirituality at that time and they call that entertainment and quickly romeo and juliet meet again they pack their things and they they escaped to the u.s and their husband was chasing them out to kill them and you were shouting yes By the time you are done watching that movie, what just happened to you was that you subscribed to adultery without knowing. Why do you think they will act a two-hour movie and they will place a 10-second sexual activity there? Have you realized that before you commit masturbation, it happens when you watch a full movie and then you see that scene, then the thought comes to mind again. Then you go and do it. Have you realized it? Listen, movies. <sighs> movies are the most spiritual platform you can ever imagine. Oh, you don't know that. Let me tell you something. Maybe you don't know. Most of the directors are inspired by demons to write what they write. Number two. You watch some of the horror movies and you see horrific faces. All those images you see are real demons. That's how they look. No, I'm not joking. Those scary images you see, you thought they imagined them. You watch Avatar, you see people with long necks. All these things are demonic beings that exist. And they are giving you a picture of these demons who exist in the spirit. Listen. 
you watch a movie like Avengers. What's the name of the last part? You know, that what that does. You see how his face looks like? It's a real demon in the spirit. Now, now let me ask you, how did they get that name? How did they get that name? There are some strange names that you find out. They, they are real names in the spirit about demons. And listen, this is it. Ah, every movie is a spiritual marketplace. They are selling something for you. And most of you have bought things. Some bought lesbianism. Some bought lust. Some bought homosexuality. Some bought greed. Some bought wickedness out of it. I'm telling you. And that's the same believer who wants to grow in God. Many don't know that you have to be a Christian when you are still watching a movie. Forward bad scenes. Forward it. You will save yourself. I know what I'm saying. I've come to realize a principle about dealing with addictions. Whatever you feed grows. Whatever you stop dies. It's a principle in the spirit. If you keep feeding of your last, your last will grow. If you keep starving your last, it will die. I'm telling you. So that man that says he wants to stop masturbating and he's still watching all kinds of nude sensual videos. You don't want to be free. No, you don't want to be free. You are just professing. You don't want to be free. Stop those tears. You don't want to be free. Shut your eyes of videos that destroy your soul. Shut those eyes. Someone says, Oh my God, it's difficult. Then you don't want to be free. Life is difficult. And anybody that wants to work with God must know that there's a price. Daniel purpose in his heart. What have you purpose in your heart to do? What have you purpose in your heart to do every morning? So this thing is, is a purpose in your heart that you will not watch certain kinds of movies. It becomes a conviction. I have convictions. There are movies I will never watch again for the rest of my life. And that's the price we pay to walk with a master. So before anybody says, Jesus, use me. Be very careful what you're asking for. Be careful. I live in two rooms. My bedroom and my prayer room. That's why I live. Nothing else goes on these eyes. No. I have over 3,000 books. As I generally, my, my, my budget for my library was 40,000 Ghana cities. So, I, look, I have different sessions. Prayer alone is almost 400 books. Books on theology. Books on hunger and thirst for Jesus. Books on church history books on God's generals. All these books are there. These eyes will feast on them in the Bible. Watch me in the next 10 years. I'll be found 10 times better than you. So many Christians think that Christianity is cheap. It's not cheap. There's a price to pay for the master. If you're unwilling to sacrifice anything for Jesus, forget about working with him. And mind you, all men are not the same. We are same in identity as Christians, but we are not the same in function. In heaven, there are rankings. The higher the price, <laughs> the higher the glory. I'm telling you. So I want to know the price you're paying. What price have you paid this year for Jesus? You've never fasted six to six ever in your life. You don't get this thing. Huh? You, many of you don't know. And you say you are hungry for Jesus. I can stay in my, in my prayer room and weep. That Jesus, I need you. Today I was weeping. I said, Jesus, I need you. I am thirsty for you. My soul pants after you. My soul longs for you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. And he knows I love him. If Jesus appears right now, he will tell you Isaac Lapapo loves him. I've given up everything for him. I'm telling you. Nothing takes its place. No. 
not my phone no this phone it can lie somewhere i'm telling you not my phone and there are some of you your phone is your god now your phone is your is your demigod your demigod you never do away with your phone it's always under your pillow you wake up with your phone you move your phone you sleep with your phone everything is about your phone you can't even put off your phone for one hour to spend time with Jesus and Jesus is watching and he's asking do I mean anything to you can you give up anything for me And next time we are saying we are Christians, we must count the cost. Jesus says, whoever will come after me must deny himself. For the past two days, I've not eaten. I've been taking only little fruit. Decided to live a fasted life for the next few days. To keep myself alive, to be able to pray every dawn spend time with my Jesus I'm telling you it's a price I pay it's a price I pay it's hard but I'm telling you it is harder when you are bound by sin so choose one hard way because both ways are hard You know, many want us to sugarcoat the words and tell them, don't worry, come as you are. It is enough. Jesus says you must deny yourself. What have you let go for Jesus? So, Babylon has agenda to change the culture of your diet. Many of you are feeding on the wrong stuff. You are hearing the wrong stuff. I said to the church the other time, any musician you listen to, whether a gospel musician or a worldly musician, has a spirit behind his song. If the inspiration of his song did not come from God, that spirit backs his song. I'm told one musician, I don't know whether it's Elton John or something, he is a gay. And you listen to his song. And you sleep with his song. And his song comes to you. Haven't you realized that when you are listening to a man of God who is anointed and you sleep with his videos, you normally have dreams about that man of God. Try it and see. Sleep with a video of a man of God, you see him in your dream that tells you that you can have an encounter with the spirit of a man of God just by coming into contact with his anointed video what, what of done also in the spirit world have you realized that in a meeting like this because we are gathered in his name angels are here some of you is healing you some of you is touching you some of you is breaking addictions in your life there is work going on in the spirit in the lives of many people in the same vein when you go to a worldly musician's gathering like Shatawale that means there are demons who are also doing the same thing in the spirit lay hands on people imparting people will last and many don't want to be educated this way and many of see I, some of you didn't realize how come this last just took over me check the last place you were I'm giving you a solution if you can close this eye and this ear gate God will transform you and faith will come to your spirit man and something will start shifting in your life. You won't see it, but it will be coming. There will be light. We are with an unveiled face as we behold us in the glass. The glory of God are changed. From glory to glory. As by the same spirit. Listen to me. Huh. He's saying that when we behold God's glory, we are changed by the spirit. When we behold the world's glory, we are changed by the world's spirit. Let me do this in 10 minutes and we close. 
Number three was to change their literature. It has got to do with your education. I've already spoken much about that. Their philosophy. Listen, this warfare we are fighting, and many of you don't know that this warfare is in the soulish realm. It says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Then he came and said, casting down imaginations. The word imagination is the word from which we have images. So picture smartest. And bringing every high thing to captivity. And bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. What we need to understand is that Satan wants to change our literature. The kind of things we read. Our education. Every single day you have been educated. There are some radio stations I will never listen to them. Never. You know why? Because you thought you were just listening. No, you were being educated. I wish I had time. Number four is their wine. Check it. In the Bible, wine signifies the spirit. In Ephesians 5.18, the Bible says, Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. That means it's either you're taking wine or the spirit. Daniel refused the wine that was offered. You know why? Because he had a better wine. What was that wine? When a man is filled with wine, he's controlled by that wine. That's why a man who has two days for his rent to expire will take wine and insult his landlord without knowing. That's how a man who is drunk with wine will see a car coming and assume the two lights are actually two motorbikes and pass through them. Why? Because the wine tells him what to do. So listen, when you are filled with wine, you are controlled with wine. Can I shock you? When you pick a balloon, huh? when you pick a balloon, and the balloon is deflated, it lies on the floor, it doesn't move. When you fill the balloon with air, it begins to move. It's only those who are filled with their spirit that can move by the spirit and many Christians are deflated you are a balloon in the making and the Bible tells us how to be filled with the Holy Ghost he says speaking to yourself in Psalms the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want you don't say that he making me lie down in green patches. You say that to yourself. He says, speaking to yourself in Psalms. He's teaching you how to be filled with the Spirit. Number one, he's speaking. Hymns and spiritual songs. The next one is number two, singing. The second one I've been filled is singing. What kind of songs do you sing? The third one, it says, making melody in your heart to the Lord. If you're a Christian who is always in a sad mood, you can never be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yay. Have you forgotten there are three things the Bible says we should do always? Number one, it says, give thanks always. Number two, it says, pray always. Number three, it says, rejoice always. Philippians 4 4. The rejoicing is not something that happens to you, it's something you make happen. It says, count it all joy when you go through diverse trials. Which means that you, received, you went for the interview and they said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we can't take you. Glory! And they're watching, say, eh? thank you, Jesus. I'm joyful. I'm joyful in Jesus. That's how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You are making melody in your heart. You know, there are some of you, eh? 
let me tell you satan can observe and act you know there are some of you you give satan clues about your experiences when he sees a sad face he knows something is wrong with you so he can predict you some of you have been too pre you have been too well predicted you've given satan so much ideas imagine you are filled with pain and you're rejoicing satan's like ah when you are not beautiful How are you doing? He has made me glad. You don't know. I have worked for days without money. You will never see it. I'm telling you. I was rejoicing in the Holy Ghost. Someone says, what is there to rejoice about? When you must be real. The joy is more real. I'm telling you. Look at somebody and rejoice. Kayalo Shatakaba Rakabaya Shaga. Satan didn't want this meeting. He didn't want this meeting. Please be seated. Hey, hey, hey. There is a difference between the indwelling of the spirit and the infilling of the spirit. The indwelling came in a day. The infilling comes constantly. You know you can own a car in a day, but to keep the car moving, you got to fuel it. So the indwelling came in one day. When you believe Jesus Christ, he came to indwell you. But the infilling must be every single time. That's your spiritual fuel. So the Bible says that when you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. There's a difference between the person of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost. So, in fact, you can have the person of the Spirit and still be weak as a believer. So many don't know the difference. The mechanism of how to engage in the power of God is to be filled with the Spirit. Now, now, back to Ephesians 5, the verse 20 gives us the final one. Of, the first who have been filled with the Spirit is what? Speaking to yourselves in Psalms. Number two is singing. Number three is making melody. Number four, the verse 20, giving thanks. Are you ready for this? Being thankful is how you get your spiritual tank full. I repeat, being thankful is how you get your spiritual tank full. Many don't know the power of thanksgiving. That's why Jesus could receive five loaves of bread and two fishes. That was a limitation because there were over 5,000 people there. You know what he did? He gave thanks. Have you ever given thanks over one seed in your wallet before? You don't understand spiritual principles. See, God designed the believer to be so thankful that he thanks God for everything. You thank God for your shoe, you thank God for your phone. Meanwhile, the next day you do the same thing. I was telling this man when he came to my place. There are days I open the fridge and thank God for every single thing. Thank you for the sugar. Thank you for the bottled water. Thank you for the milk. Thank you for the sardine. Thank you for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, for, uh, for the lipton. I, I thank you for everything. Thank you for the tomatoes. I thank him. You don't know what he has done. Thanksgiving is a spiritual weapon. Many of you don't know. According to spiritual arithmetic, out of every 10 believers, only one give thanks. How did I know? 10 lepers were healed. One came to give thanks. And Jesus asked, where are the other nine? That means God was interested in the nine. And he told only one, that your faith has made it whole. That made me realize that nine were healed, one was made whole. There's a difference. When you are healed, where your problem is, is gone. When you are made whole, that means your marriage comes back, your business comes back, 
your spiritual life comes back everything about your life becomes whole again and he calls it thy faith that means every act of thanks is an act of faith lift your hands say thank you Jesus thank you can you say that repetitively for the next one minute thank you for anything that comes to mind thank you Jesus thank you for salvation thank you for your Holy Spirit thank you for your blood that was shed for me thank you for your power thank you for your spirit that lives in me <laughs> thank you for your goodness thank you for your kindness thank you for your mercies thank you thank you thank you Jesus thank you thank you thank you for kingdom ambassadors thank you for the leaders thank you for pastor Elliot thank you for the instrumentalist thank you for minister Philip Ajali thank you for minister Sam thank you for minister Zach thank you thank you Jesus thank you for the chairs you provided in this meeting thank you for the keyboard you provided thank you for the mixer you provided thank you for the lights thank you for the fans thank you so much thank you for giving us shelter thank you thank you for the power you provided thank you for the cameras thank you <laughs> glory thank you Jesus thank you Lord for the phone thank you for the shoes you get me thank you for the clothes you get me it's all by you thank you thank you thank you for my wife thank you for my children thank you thank you for my car thank you that I can afford fuel thank you thank you so much Jesus I'm grateful I'm grateful I'm grateful I'm grateful thank you <laughs> thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you father thank you Holy Spirit thank you father I bless your name Jesus I give you glory thank you father I bless your name Lord thank you thank you I don't think I can finish this, this message I skip to the last one be seated for just one minute I skip to the last one and we pray. The culture of Babylon wanted to change their prayer life. Have you realized we live in a culture where it is difficult to pray? It's a Babylonian system. The God of this age has designed demonic plottings to ensure that believers don't pray have you realized the very time you decide to pray at the very time certain phone calls come the days you want to pray is the days you feel extremely tired and many of you don't know many of you don't know this and those of you who started a prayer journey and it lasted for three months and all of a sudden it's gone down again I, I want to tell you something there are three things that is making prayer a struggle in your life and today I'll help you by delivering you the first thing is number one ignorance <laughs> you want to be a man of prayer how many books on prayer do you have do you understand the loss of prayer do you understand principles in prayer do you understand persistence in prayer? Do you understand kinds of prayer? The only prayer you know is die by fire. How can you advance? Listen, I wanted to be a master of prayer. I have almost 400 books only on prayer. Aside that is. And listen to me. Decide to build it. See, anyone who is going somewhere as a Christian and doesn't have a library is going nowhere I repeat myself anyone who is going somewhere as a Christian without a library is going nowhere you must have a, at least a small shelf where you have some books on it use money to don't borrow books buy books listen I'm, I'm teaching you something if you don't have a bookshelf I'm sorry for you you can't advance when you follow hungry people you become hungry 
I read about crazy men of prayer and I said so this my tiny prayers I can't continue this way it was hungry men that made me hungry Ian Bounce could stay and pray for 11 hours a day and this man prayed until by the age, by the age of 45 he was looking 85 praying hide prayed consistently protractedly until his heart shifted from the left to the right David Brainerd prayed until he prayed one day in snow until his sweat melted the snow upon him you don't know this thing many of you know Charles Finney but you don't know Father Nash it was Father Nash that made the ministry of Charles Finney. In fact, the very day Father Nash died, Charles Finney left evangelistic ministry, the revival ministry. And he became a lecturer for the rest of his life, lecturing on revival. Before Charles Finney enters a town, Father Nash will go two weeks before time and pay for the cheapest garage or room, stay there on one poster for two weeks, he's groaning without food let there be a move so Charles Finney will land in a place 10 miles people are falling under the power of God a time came people fell under the power of God people became used to it when you see someone falling it says Finney is around this generation what a move but we make no move Listen, the secret of failing is failing in secret prayer. Many are ignorant. Ah, These generals turn things upside down by their prayer life. Moravian brothers, you can go and check it on the internet. We call it the Moravian movement. A group of brethren hid themselves in a cave and decided to give themselves to prayer before missions begins. And they prayed on a shift system 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, non stop for 100 years. Go and check the history. Go and read about Morian brothers. Go and check. Every missionary that best fought in glory, it was out of their prayer. They prayed 24 hours a day for 100 years in shifts. There was no single day no one prayed. It was out of the Morian brothers that John, John Wesley came. Because he met them in a ship. The ship was about to crash. And when he saw the Morian brothers gathered in the ship, and the smile on their face and the joy they used to sing hymns, John Wesley was sure. He said, are they human beings? And he got close to them. On that day, that ship didn't crash. That's why he caught his fire. William Carey caught his fire from Moriam Brothers. 100 years. And I, you see, you can't read about these people and not be hungry. I have all their pictures there. And this is no joke many of us are see, see the secret to the future is history there is nothing new all the new clothes you are wearing they came from 1942 I'm telling you the secret to the future is history if you want to know your future check what people did in the past I found that out and I knew that it was through prayer men accomplished their ministries I decided to give myself to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Ignorance is one of the big problems. Why you are struggling in prayer? Get good books on prayer to you solve it. That's number one. Number two is indiscipline. I close. Indiscipline. I say this everywhere and I'll keep repeating it. There are seven things killing your prayer life. Number one is overeating. 
I've seen believers who eat four bottles of Kenki at 11 p.m. And they are telling the Holy Ghost to wake them up at 2 a.m. Now, let me show you what that equation means. That equation is called spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. You are a wicked man. To eat four balls and tell the Holy Ghost to wake you up at 2 a.m. You must be wicked. Listen. Do you know that Jesus worked no miracle until he fasted 40 days? Ask yourself why. He was filled with the Holy Ghost too. Yet he was driven in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He had nothing but 40 days. In Luke 4, 14, the Bible says he retained in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> Check it very well. He worked no miracle. Healed no sick until he was done with 40 days. If you're a believer who loves feasting and not fasting, eh, I'm telling you, you go far. I'm a fasting machine. I fasted three days, seven days, 14 days, 21 days, and 40 days of water. Last year, I did 40 days on water and coconut water. This year, I did 40 days on water and coconut water. Now, if you didn't hear from the Lord, don't try this at home. <laughs> Listen, if, if you love food more than your purpose, eh, food will be the reason why you will not accomplish your purpose. Check the Bible. Anyone who loves food doesn't go far. Uh, your, your father, Adam, it was food that brought him down now. Esau, it was food. That made him lose his birthright. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16, you know what the Bible calls him? A fornicator. Did you ever see fornication in his life? Yet the Bible tells us that lest anyone be a fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for a muscle of meat sold his birthright, I didn't understand this. Why does the Bible call him a fornicator when he only took food? You know what it means? Anyone who cannot control his food appetite cannot control his sex appetite. Haven't you realized that when you are fully full, you fool? You don't realize it. Check yourself anytime you're fully full. There is nothing spiritual that comes to mind. You check it. It's not like you feel like eating. You feel like hanging around with girls. You just you just feel like watching a movie. There is nothing spiritual that comes to mind. Foolish conversations. That nothing spiritual comes to mind. And that should tell you the danger. If you are the kind of believer that eats three times a day all your life, I am telling you, you would not only will you not accomplish your purpose, you will die before your time. <laughs> ah, I didn't get this. <laughs> I'm telling you. No, no. Maybe when I say you die before your time, you think I'm scared. I'm not scaring you. It's the truth. Yes. Listen, listen to me. Most of the meat that you'll be eating, uh, the goat meat you'll be eating, there are some of you, uh, after seven years, it's still in your line race. There are food you ate seven years ago. It's still there. I am telling you. What, where do you think colon cancer came from? It came from food that was rotting in the stomach lineries over years. Even in farming, when you grow crops on the land for a long time, there's a time you live in. It's called fallow period. For it to regain its strength again, it is you that keeps putting food in your belly and you don't go for rest. Anytime you are fasting, you are giving even your physical body the opportunity to repair. So listen to me. There are meats that are still in your stomach line race. Do you see, even when you are chewing meat, you don't chew it well. So, you see, we are supposed to chew meat and chicken till it is like milk. But because of greed and... We are in a hurry to consume everything. So, there are some of the meats. 
the way they are hard that's how they entered our stomach and the stomach was it was foreign to it so it couldn't digest it so it kept it in your stomach line race. so what happens when you do longer fast like 24 hours fast on water six to six fast only on water if you are here you fast from six to twelve you're not serious so so 24 hours on on, on water three days on water <laughs> Let me let me conclude. Hold on. When you do that, do you know what happens to you? Your stomach now is craving for food. He said, Ah, I've been eating nine o'clock. Why is there no food coming? Then your stomach will give you blow. Boom. That's why you feel crrr in your stomach. Don't mind him. Don't mind him. Don't mind him. Your stomach is telling you I'm in charge. Why are you doing this to me? Your stomach is now fighting you. You are telling you, no, I am in charge. You are not eating. That's why you feel dizzy. He says, eh, let's go to the next level. Then he will send you dizziness. So, anytime you're fasting, there's a battle. Listen, listen. There is nobody who fasts 24 hours and die. The human body has the capacity of, of going without food for 55 days on water before you die. For your information, the most, the most important thing in your life is not food. The first thing is air. Second is not food. Second is water. Third is not food. Third is sleep. Number four is food. So food is even the fourth category of the most important thing in your life. That means you can live without food. Since yesterday, I'm not eating. I'm still preaching with power. Nothing has changed. So stop convincing yourself. And 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 you are fasting from sea to sea. You feel this is hey, I'm dying. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. You won't die, I'm die. you won't die. You see? Listen, look at Philippians chapter 3, the verse 19. If this verse does not scare you. I don't know what else will scare you. Philippians 3.19 Quickly. Who is there? He says whose end is destruction? Whose God is their belly? You, any believer who loves food worships his stomach. He, look, he didn't use small G. He used big G. Who is in charge of your belly? Whose belly is their God? Huh. Some of you must get angry. I'm telling you. We are fasting 100 days at church. Oh. Listen. It's not, G, it's not a joke. Oh. We did 40 days in January. We did 30 days in June. We are doing 100 days. We'll finish 13 December. So the check itself has fasted 170 days. And I've been fasting since January. So I've eaten. I, I, have, I have fasted more than 200 days in this year. And you see, you, you see your body can get used to it too. Let 6 to 6 be normal for your life. Yeah, 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 that's your breakfast. You know, you see, you, the way you can see a woman's buttocks and you are moved. When you begin fasting, all those things will run away. You have an addiction. I will give you three days on water. Listen, take my advice. You have an addiction. Three days on water, it will break. Most of the addictions are stirred out by spirits. Let me show you a mechanism. Before anybody becomes addicted to anything, especially pornography and masturbation, there is a process I need to teach you. You first began in your own energy. And when you began with your own energy, you were the one in control. So you can choose to watch pornography on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. In the early stages, you had control. 
That's when you began with your energy. But there's a, there's a challenge in the spirit. Spirit and consistency. That's what the Bible tells us to persevere in prayer. Are you getting this thing? So, when the, sp- when the spirit realm recognizes that you are watching pornography in your own energy, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, the next week you did it, the next two weeks you did it, what happens is that you attract the attention of a spirit being. It's called the spirit of perversion and lust. Then the spirit being now takes over your life like this. When he takes over your life, now he begins to supply his energy and takes your energy. So now you don't have an energy again. So you can't choose. Now you want to stop, but there's another energy energizing you to do it. That's when it, it becomes an addiction. Listen, 98% of addictions are backed by spirits. And they started when you gave them consistency. Nobody gets addicted in a day. I'm telling you. Likewise, when you begin praying in the first three months, it's very difficult because you start with your energy. You go one hour, you set the alarm clock and you pray until this one hour. If it's not one hour, you don't stop. It's difficult. Do it. When you keep doing that one hour over a stretch of time, likewise in Zechariah 12, 10, the Bible calls the Holy Ghost the spirit of supplication. He's a spirit. He takes over that one hour you are doing consistently and he applies his energy to that energy. And now you want to stop praying, you can't. Now listen to me. I've come to a place where prayerlessness is a burden for me. And I'm serious. I am now addicted to prayer. The minimum I go for a day is six hours. That's the minimum. I do eight. I do ten. Last year I did 24 hours in prayer. 2 a.m. to 2 a.m. 15 hours, 18 hours, normal. Now, see, don't go and start praying 15 hours. You'll be discouraged. Start from where you are and keep breaking your records. Do the one hour for a time. Break it to two hours. Tell God to give you strength and you keep advancing gradually. Do it gently. It is better to pray 10 minutes and do it consistently than to pray 10 hours and not continue. Because spirits are not consistency. Anything you do consistently, a spirit will back it. Whether in the demonic kingdom or in God's kingdom. Listen to me. I am begging you, give yourself to prayer. Prayer will do so much in your life. There are some of you, eh? The prayers you are investing now will prepare your future. I am telling you. Jesus says, pray lest you enter temptation. The only way you overcome sin is temptation. Leonard Ravi who said, a sinning man will stop praying, a praying man will stop sinning. It's a simple thing. When God found himself as a man in the person of Jesus, he prayed. Doesn't this scare you? That when God found himself as a man, he prayed. At his baptism, when everybody was baptized, nothing happened. When Jesus was baptized, the Bible says he was praying, the heavens was opened. In Luke chapter 5, the verse 16, the Bible says, whilst he was working miracles, he often withdrew himself and went to pray. You know why? He was applying a certain system. We call it a leaking system. Listen, you, you, you leak spiritually. The more you are serving God, the more you are leaking. That's why every single time you, you need infilling. Because you leak. So, so yesterday's energy is gone. In Luke 6, 12, the Bible says he prayed all night. In the verse 13, the Bible says he began to appoint the 12. Look, Jesus prayed all night to appoint 12 disciples. And out of the 12, one was the devil. So you who doesn't pray, you choose 12 devils. That means before Jesus took any major decision, he prayed. How come you are taking decisions looking at the height of the guy? Looking at the hair of, on, on his chest? And you don't pray. 
the Bible says as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered I came to realize the real deal about prayer is not what prayer does for you but what prayer does to you prayer does not change things alone it changes you Adam had communion with God every morning Adam had trees fruit, water animals to kill and eat so Adam didn't have a need so if Adam was communion with God through prayer was he asking God for something so that tells us real prayer is fellowship with God we pray because we love him not because we need things you stay with him you love on him you meditate upon him you give him thanks adoration you begin to intercede for others any intercessor can learn how to pray long I have all the 197 countries on my prayer room wall if you pray one minute for each of them that's 197 hours you can't tell me you can't pray for long I have close to thousand prayer topics. So me and so me. I'm telling you. So Jesus began ministry praying, did ministry praying, even before he died, he prayed. You know the shocking thing in Hebrews 7 25, the Bible says he ever lived to make intercession. So that means even Jesus in heaven, the only ministry he did not retire from was prayer. He's not preaching, the church is preaching. He's not healing, the church is healing. He's not performing miracles, the church is doing it. The only thing he's still doing is praying. And how come you are not praying? You want to be a giant for God and you don't pray, forget about it. Prayer is the wheels upon which the locomotive of God's power flows. It is the best thing any man can do for God and for men. Prayer! It will change your life. It will put anointing on you. I'm telling you. I go to church every 2 a.m. on Sunday and I pray from 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. before I hold the microphone to preach one hour sermon. Can you imagine seven hours against one hour? I pray seven hours, sometimes four hours, sometimes five hours to preach a one hour sermon. Listen, this thing, listen, Christianity is impossible without prayer. I am telling you. Young lady, pray. The right people come to you. Pray. In this tough economy, it's only those who pray who survive. Look at the life of Daniel. They wanted to change his prayer life. Meanwhile, if you check the Bible, it was through prayer he was able to decode hard sentences. Dissolve doubts. How can a king have a dream and a king come and tell you that? Tell me the dream and tell me the interpretation. Tell me the dream I had and interpret it. Have you heard something before? No. It was through prayer Daniel had that revelation. I beg you. Let's pray. Rise up on your feet. In the next five minutes, before I hand over this mic, you want to pray and say, Father, baptize me with the spirit of prayer. Listen, God has given me grace to pray. I can impart it. If you will pray this prayer, something will happen to you. There are about 13 people here. I hear my left ear. The Lord is saying, He's about to wash you with prayer. Lift your voice and begin to pray. small prayer. Grace to 
shall build on your altar. Let the spirit of prayer rest upon my life. Let the spirit of supplication rest upon my life. The Holy Ghost is going to baptize 13 people with fire, fresh fire. Ushers, get ready. Some people will be baptized. If your heart is open, you can receive. You can receive. Help her. Fire is falling on some of you. Bring them forward here. Bring them forward. Fire. 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 A baptism of fire. Bring them forward. A baptism of fire. A baptism of fire. A baptism of fire. The Holy Ghost is touching you. The Holy Ghost is touching you. You will never be the same. Carry them here. The Holy Ghost is touching you. Something will shift in your life. Something will shift. I see a big she's broken. I see a big she's broken. I see a big she's broken. There is a release. Oh Jesus. How this matter? There is a release. Fire! 
sosai
Release!
and shall not retire my presence. They will carry to the carry. They will carry my fire to the ends of the world. I see the Lord. I see Him. I see Him in the clouds. I see His glory in the midst of the cherubs. And He cries. I call thee out of darkness to be my light in this dark world. I see his glory. I see the glory of the king. I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. Just begin to thank the Lord and bless you. Ever great, you are the least on me for time. You reign forever, your name is ever great. You are the least on me for time. Lift your hands up.
let those hands be lifted to Jesus. You reign forever. Your name is ever You are the wisdom before time begun. You are the wisdom before time begun. You are the Jesus seated on the throne I see his angels ascending everywhere I see the spirit turning things again oh hallelujah to the lamb upon the throne thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the angels. See the angels. Your spirit. See the angels. They are anointing many people here. Spirit of the bride. Look at the angels. Come, let's feast and die. Spirit of the bride, say, Look at the angels. Come, let's feast and die. I hear your call in me. I hear your spirit. Call in me. Spirit of the bride, say, Come. Come, let's feast and die. Spirit of the bride, say, come, 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 let's be still. There's a place that I'm yearning for. Oh, this place that I have found keeps me yearning for. There's a place that I'm yearning for.
we are officially done for today i don't want to quench the atmosphere we are officially done for today if you want to continue praying you can continue praying if you want to continue worshiping you can continue worshiping if you have to leave you are free to leave but we're just going to sustain this atmosphere but we are officially done thank you all so much for coming if you brought an offering for the lord or you want to sow a seed into this atmosphere there are two offering baskets in front you can feel free to walk in anytime and then just drop them inside thank you all so much for coming and god bless you there will also be some books at the back in case you want to buy some books so you can go purchase some books there god bless you